Cooper, <laughs> my bye. <laughs> I think I'll have Nettie prepare a room for you. You're here so often. It won't be necessary, Alex. Well, then perhaps you could explain these visits from one of Springfield's finest as becoming almost a daily occurrence. There's just been some questions raised about your family recently. And they've all been answered, Frank, including Josh and Reva's silly little theory about two Derry DeMarcos. It's just my job to explore every possible angle on a case. Well, even when they're absolutely ridiculous. Come on, Alex. Look, if you made an accusation, wouldn't you want me to investigate it just as thoroughly? <laughs> all right, now, may I speak to your brother? No, I'm present? sorry. You just missed him. Really? Mm. Where is he? He's out of town. He's in Chicago. A few days on business. Would you see that he even gets a message from me, please? Well, I'm not really certain he's going to be calling in today. Oh, he'll want to get this one. Just tell him Terry DeMarco just woke up from her coma yesterday. Wow, that's wonderful. Hmm? I mean, I'm very happy for you and your partner. Well, thank you. There is a slight problem, however. It seems that she doesn't remember me. In fact, she says she's never even seen me before. Really? <laughs> what? Amnesia, or...? It's maybe. There's just something very strange about her memory loss, and I thought that your brother would find it very interesting. Uh, uh, what has this got to do with my brother? It seems that Terry remembers everything about her life up until about eight months ago. Her life, her family in Detroit. She remembers absolutely nothing about Springfield. Well, that's odd, I suppose, but then again, you and I are doctors, are we? She was shown a picture of Annie Dutton, and she recognized her. Said she met her on vacation. Now, Alex, that sounds like a lot like Josh and Reba's story now, doesn't it? Well, I really wouldn't know. Well, I don't know about you, but Josh and Reba's accusations don't seem so crazy after all now, do they? Look, I'm gonna get the answers one way or another. And you tell your brother I need to see him as soon as possible. The sooner the better for his sake. Have a nice day. Now, do you see why I have to get out of here? What, was there a problem with feeding time at the zoo this morning? Alex, did anyone see you come up here? No, but Frank Cooper was just downstairs, and he was asking for you. Well, did you tell him anything? Well, of course not. But he had some very troubling news. Seems the real Terry DeMarco is out of her coma. That's impossible. I knew this was going to happen, Alan. I knew this was going to happen. And she seems to remember quite a bit, like meeting someone who looks exactly like the old Annie Dutton. Damn it. Annie, Annie, do not panic. No, do I not panic. What do you mean, don't, don't panic? panic? Alan, if panic. you ask me, this is a gift. It's a chance to rid yourself of this woman once and for all. You shut up, Alex. Alan, you do not need her. You are a powerful businessman. You don't need Sarah, not a you common get the hell here. It's none of your business, this damn it. It's certainly exactly my business. And, Alan, you have a responsibility to the family and to this company, not to some, some face-stealing lunatic. Are you going to let her talk about me like this? Alan! Alan, will you get rid of her once and for all and just save yourself? Alan, come on, you can cut your losses here, but you've got to do it soon. She will take you down, she will ruin you. All right, Alex, you have made your point. No, no, I want to hear you say goodbye to her right now. I today. said you have made no, your point, just Alex. Wait a minute. <laughs> maybe she's right. You know, maybe I am bad for you after everything you've done for me. Well, maybe someone finally making some sense here. I mean, all you tried to do is protect me and all. I've been just awful. I mean, you're such a wonderful man. You deserve better than me. And I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm just so scared. It's like the walls are closing in on me and I'm sorry for everything I've done. And maybe it's just time for me to leave and, and for you to be alone again. Oh, this is this is extraordinary, really, Annie. It's really quite a spectacular performance. Alex, <gasps> Alex, would you leave us alone for a few minutes? No, Alan. Alan, please. Alex, I Stay ask you to leave us alone. This is your last chance, Alan. Just cut her loose. You again. I want you to know I haven't given up on our arrangement. You could have fooled me. I'm prepared to make you a concrete offer if you will come back to work for me, Ben. Sorry, big man. We've done that dance before. 
You're not a very good partner. You have a need to lead. If you're as ambitious as I think you are, Ben, you won't be able to refuse my offer. <laughs> All right. All right, big man. I'll come over. Would you better make it a quick sell? I don't have a lot of time. It won't take long. You are a damn fool, Alan. No, Alex. I am the only person standing between Annie and a jail cell. And I'm not going to let anyone take her away from me. A piece of Spalding Enterprises. Alan, she's gone. Annie's gone. 